Bianca of BiancaRoberts.com and welcome to my channel. If this is the first time that you have come to my channel, I am um, working on my video skills and I'm on my way somewhere. So I figured I would go ahead and record this video because it should be finished before I get to my destination. So it's mounted, my hands are on my wheel, I'm not holding my camera, just thought I might note that. So the purpose of this video is if you are interested in a career in real estate, I'm going to tell you the difference between being a realtor and a builder sales rep because I've been fortunate enough to have been both of those. So number one, the difference between being a realtor and a builder sales rep is as a realtor, most people know you have to go to real estate school and get your real estate license. As a builder rep, meaning you sell homes for a builder in the state of Texas, you are not required to have a license. And I know some people have never heard of that before. They're shocked, they're like, what? They probably assumed that you had to have a real estate license to work for a builder. Again, I can't speak for other states, but in Texas, you are not required to have a real estate license. So that means that you can go to any builder's website that you might be interested in working for, pull up their careers tab, review what they say about their requirements for hiring a salesperson, and don't be surprised if you typically find the following things. Sometimes they request for you not to have ever been licensed as a realtor before. Sometimes the requirements will say that all they want is someone who has had experience in high dollar or high ticket sales. And what that means is somebody who sold cars before, um, appliances, furniture, all of those um, people in the builder world like that in terms of hiring. One of my ex-colleagues, as a matter of fact, he didn't have any type of sales experience with building or um, things like I just uh, mentioned. He actually went to a builder's um, open house where they were hiring for sales reps and he sold, um, what do you call it, uh, plans for people who were um, enrolling their elderly parents into, um, what do you call it, assisted living. So that was interesting. So the other part of it that I can tell you, because in my 10 year career working with builders, I have worked with both um, uh, three national builders, which means that they build homes all over the world or I'm sorry, all over the US, not all over the, all over the world. And one of them was a Texas only builder. So I've worked for quite a few builders. And even when I was not in the sales world portion, one of the builders that I worked for knew that I was licensed and they required for me to make my license inactive. So what does that mean? That means that even if you're not in sales, a builder wants you to sell only their homes exclusively. So that just basically means um, they don't, there's not a way that they can kind of ensure that unless they make you uh, put your license inactive. So um, that's a, another, I guess, point. Um, next point is being a realtor, you pretty much, you know, work the schedule that you want to work. Um, you structure your business the way you want to structure it because you have your own business. When you work for a builder, you have what I would call store hours. So that means that typically in the Houston, Texas area, all builders have a really similar schedule. So that means that as a sales rep, you would work um, or have off two days during the week and then you're going to work every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday is kind of negotiable, but typically you work the hours where people are off. There are a couple of builders that you can find in the Houston area who give their sales reps Sunday off, 
but for the most part, if you're gonna be a builder sales rep, you're gonna work every Saturday, every Sunday. Um, the hours on Saturday would probably be 10 to seven or 10 to six if it's daylight savings. And then on Sunday, typically one to seven or 12 to seven or 12 to six, you also will work holidays. Now, in terms of time off, as a realtor, again, you structure your business the way you want. If you work for a builder as a builder sales rep, it's a corporate job, it's a corporate environment. So you have to request to be off for vacation. If you work in a place that you have a sales partner, then if your partner requests to be off before you do, sometimes you will be denied whatever vacation time or time off that you want because your partner requested it first. Now, before I go over a couple of more differences between being a realtor and a sales rep, I'm gonna tell you a little story. Back in 2000, I guess it would have been about 2006, before the great real estate crash, I was working with a couple that flew in to Houston from Chicago. And they were under a semi-tight schedule to be able to find a house because they were relocating here. And they found this neighborhood that they loved. And so every single time they'd fly in for the weekend, we'd go on these whirlwind tours. There's this one neighborhood where all of the homes were built like around um, the 1950s to 60s. It was right up my alley because I love mid-century modern homes. And the wife had a particular affinity for mid-century modern homes. She said she needed to be within a three mile radius of her new job here in Houston. And so we would go and we would look at home after home after home and they'd fly back. And one weekend I said, you know, they're not buying any of these homes. They say that that's the neighborhood that they want to be in, but nothing in that neighborhood is brand new. So one weekend um, when they did not come, I went and I took a tour around the area that kind of would fall into the requirement that she had, which was to be within three miles of her work. And I met a builder sales rep at a townhome community. They only had like two homes left that were under construction and they were gonna build a new section, but it was gonna take six to seven months. And I knew that they didn't have that type of time. So he had two, what they call um, nearly finished homes ready, three-story townhome. I walked in and I said, you know what? I'm going to bring my clients back, see how they feel about it. This is not the style of architecture that they like. Um, it's Mediterranean, but hey, we're gonna see. Um, I brought them back that following weekend. As soon as she walked into one of the homes that was like 90% complete, I knew she wanted it. She paused, she looked around, she was like, I want this place. So I was like, boom, talked to the sales rep. The sales rep wrote the contract because that's what builders typically do. They have their own contracts that they make people sign closed in three weeks. It was literally one of the easiest transactions I ever had. And at that moment, I said to me, to myself, I said, okay, I need to know how to get his job. I need to know what in the world I can do to become a builder sales rep. Now, I won't spare you, I'll spare you all those details about how long it took me to actually get, um, to get uh, to the point where I had a, a builder sales rep job, but I eventually did do it. When you work for a builder rep, uh, as a builder sales rep, it's a corporate job. It has all the corporate um, you know, markings. You get insurance and 401k, but all the things that come along with being a business owner and kind of mapping your own way is not something that happens when you're working as a builder sales rep. Also, when I first started out in my first builder sales rep uh, position, I was alone, meaning I did not have a partner. 
that's how realtors usually work they're independent they do their own thing they don't have anybody that they're partnered with unless they're on a team as a builder rep you can be uh, assigned to a partner and my first time getting assigned with a partner i hated it i hated the person that i was assigned with and i was miserable now the second time i got a partner i love that guy i adored him we had the best relationship but the other downside to it was they had moved me which is another sales rep type thing if you work for a builder they can move you to whatever location that they want to whether it's um, close to your house or not a lot of builders they will try to accommodate you but um, if it's not close to to your where you live I mean you can commute just like you would commute you know going to a nine to five an hour or two each day and that happened to me on multiple occasions um, so overall this is the way I would compare the two again you don't have to be licensed to be a builder sales rep in Texas you will get all kinds of benefits and um, oh the last thing I have, of course is the money so if you stuck around to the end of this video and you waited to hear about the money part it might kind of really blow your mind as a realtor you will probably make little money like very little money in your first like one to two years unless you know how to generate leads and business for yourself as a builder sales rep, you will make two, three, four, five times the amount of money that you can make as a realtor, especially in your first one to two years. Because builder locations usually sell themselves, a lot of them do, meaning that as a realtor, you're going to have to, you know, have your website, you're going to have to pay for your signs and your business cards and any of the kind of stuff that you need to market your business, you will pay for that yourself. As a builder sales rep, not only is there a marketing department that's behind you, typically they'll give you a name tag, they'll give you even uniforms. One of the builders that I work for used to have their salespeople wear uh, a jacket and the company paid for that jacket. Um, all of those things are provided for you as a builder sales rep. You're going to dump a lot of money into being a realtor because it's your own business. You have to pay for everything up front. The exchange in working for a builder is just say, for example, a buyer gets 3% commission as a, um, I mean, you get 3% commission as a realtor when you work for a buyer. Typically on the builder side, you won't get as much in commission per sale, meaning I don't know of any builder that will pay their sales rep 3% of the commission, but they have like three, four, five, six times as much business. So say for example, one of the builders that I work for, they paid the salespeople 2% commission, but you're making maybe five or six sales in a month versus being a realtor, you may not be producing that much. As a matter of fact, I almost guarantee that you would not be producing that much. And depending on the dollar amount of the location that your builder assigns you to, I mean, you could almost easily be making 150, 250, $350,000 and up a year. There are people that I know from the builder's world that were in really hot locations so for example, Katie is a location that has, like you could put up a cardboard box in Katie and it will sell. So if you are fortunate enough in the builder world to be assigned a location like that, you can make a lot of money. It's super, super lucrative. And the only thing that you really have to worry about is making sure you have good realtor relationships because realtors bring buyers to you. You sit there, and just while the, the neighborhood is building, you wait for people to come in and buy homes, either with a realtor or without realtor representation. So I didn't actually intend for this video to be that long, but I wanted to get all of my points out. So if you stay to the end, comment and below and tell me which one does it sound like you would want to try 
if you're interested in um, being in the real estate world. Follow me on all my socials. That will be at the end of this video as well. And thank you for joining.